Welcome, friends. It's another episode of the On.NET Live Show, where our mission is to empower you, the .NET community members, to achieve more. I'm your host, Scott Addy, with co-hosts David Pine and Cam Soper. Hey. I'd like to welcome today's guest, Hamida Rabai. Hamida, would you like to uh, briefly introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah. Hello. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to the .NET show. Uh, I am Hamid Arbay. I have been working in computer domain over 13 years. I started my professional career in Tunisia working for multinational corporation as a software developer and engineering. Uh, after moving to Canada, I started as a .NET consultant uh, and I'm currently a cloud solution architect at Revenue Quebec is a, is a, is a government uh, in Quebec, Canada. I have been awarded as most valuable professional in developer technologies and I was Microsoft uh, Dev Heroes and uh, I hold the several Azure certification. Uh, I'm also a Microsoft certified trainer, a member of .NET Foundation, and a book author. We will talk about my books after. Thank you. Wow. It's, it's so Hamida is keeping very, very busy. Um, it's cool to hear about the Microsoft certified trainer um, designation. Yeah. That's definitely not an easy thing to attain. Awesome work there. So what would you like to uh, share with us today in the show? Uh, today, I will talk about uh, how to build a modern uh, cloud application using containers, uh, specifically in Azure. So we'll, uh, we will just talk about how we can prepare the, uh, the development environment internally and how we we'll deploy and which services we are able to, uh, to consume in Azure. Awesome. Let's dig into it. Thank you. Okay. So you here you can find all uh, links on Medium. I have a Medium blog, so you can reach me by Medium blogs uh, after the session if you have any questions after the session. And uh, I have a YouTube uh, channel, and uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn also to reach me for any question related to session or any things related to Azure uh, containers. Uh, we will start talking about microservices architecture. Uh, because we need to understand the difference uh, between containers, microservices, and uh, Docker as a technologies that we will use it today uh, to deploy and uh, to build, uh, to run, and deploy our container internally. And it's supported also by Azure uh, containers uh, services. We see that after uh, we we try to see the, an overview about the difference between a uh, Docker container, Docker image, uh, what is Docker file, where we use the Docker file, and uh, we we'll prepare our environments and develop an environment before deploying our containers in Azure. So to start, microservices architecture, microservices are the natural evolution of uh, service-oriented architecture. But uh, we have some differences between microservices and service-oriented architecture. Uh, so we have some characteristics of uh, microservices. In, Microsoft, uh, in uh, microservices architecture, uh, services are small and, and dependent, loosely coupled. Uh, each service is a separate code base, which can be managed by a small uh, development team. 
and the services can be deployed independently. A team can update an existing uh, service without rebuilding and redeploying the entire of the application. And services are responsible for persisting their own data or uh, external state. This differs from the traditional model where a separate data layer handles data persistence. The different services communicate with each other by using well-defined APIs and internal implementation. Details of every uh, for each uh, service are hidden from other services. So the services don't need to share the same technologies, stack, libraries, or frameworks. So we are in the same application. We can have multiple technologies, multiple framework, .NET, uh, Python, for example. So we, we are not limited uh, like traditional uh, application in one uh, framework, one technology stack. Besides for the service themselves, some other component appears in typical uh, microservice architecture, for example, management. We have management component that is responsible for placing services on nodes, identifying failures, rebalancing services across nodes, and so forth. So this is about a microservices architecture that is different from monolithic approach when we have a unique and a single application to deploy. And we, we talk about microservices because sometimes uh, we, when we said microservices, we talk about containers, but it's different. And containers combine an application plus, plus the configuration and dependency into a single and dependently deployable unit. And containers are an excellent fit for bundling and deploying independent uh, microservices. So, so real quick question. You're, you're saying that microservices um could run like outside of a container you could use a microservices architecture completely regardless of containers just with just individual apps deployed separately right exactly yes so we can run it independently from containers but uh, containers is like a, a technology that we are able to use it uh, it's a really excellent fit where, where we can deploy uh, really our uh, microservices so because we are able to manage the communication between the different microservices so it's uh, less suitable fit but not related really to microservices so they are different because we will see after that in containers we are able to deploy also monolithic applications so so it's a way it's technology it's a stack that we will use it just to deploy our services And uh, now we'll see the difference between containers and Docker. So containerization is an approach to software development in which an application or service, its dependency and its configuration, uh, when you say the uh, uh, configuration is abstracted as the deployment manifest files, for example, are packaged together as a container image. The containerized application can be tested as a unit and deployed as a container image instance and to be hosted in operating system. Just as uh, shipping containers allow goods to be transported by ship, train, or truck, regardless of the cargo inside, software containers act as uh, a standard unit of software development that can contain different code and dependency. And containerizing software this way enables developers and IT professionals to deploy them across different environments with a little or no modification. Containers are also uh, isolated application from each other on a shared operating system. And containerized application run on top of container host that in turn runs on the operating system or we can uh, run on Linux or Windows. Containers, therefore, have a significantly smaller footprint than virtual machines images. Each container can run wall web application or service as we can see here in, uh, in the picture, so we, as you can see here in Docker host, uh, in container host, we have uh, first application, app one, second application, app two, service one, and service two. Uh, they are controlized application and services. We have another benefit of containerization, that is scalability. You can scale out quickly by creating new containers for short-term tasks. From, from an application point of view, instantiating uh, an, an image is similar to creating a container. Uh, it's like instantiating a process. It can be a service, can be a web application. And uh, we have another benefit that is readability. 
So when you run multiple instances on the same image across multiple host servers, you typically want each container. When you said container image instance, you see the difference between image and container after to run in a different host server or virtual machine because the backend, let's say, of container is really physically it's a virtual machine in different fault domains. So container offer the benefit of isolation and portability, agility, scalability, and control across the whole application lifecycle workflow. And we have another benefits related to environment isolation, that is the DevOps, the separation between the development and the ops, the dev, uh, dev team and ops. Uh, here we talk about really DevOps. Now uh, we'll see the difference between, con because we talk about container, we talk about image, but what is the difference between them? A Docker container is virtualized runtime environment used in application development. So with, with Docker, we are able to create, run, deploy applications that are isolated from underlying hardware. A Docker container can use just one image and uh, one machine, share its uh, kernel and virtualize the operating system to run more isolated processes. So Docker containers are lightweight. But what is Docker image? Docker image, it's like a snapshot in other uh, types of virtual um, machine environments. It's a record of a Docker container at specific point in time. Docker, uh, Docker images are also immutable. While they can be changed, they can be duplicated, shared, or deleted. The feature is useful for testing new software configuration because whatever happens, the image remains unchanged. And container require the existing uh, existing of runnable images to exist. We will see why after. And they are independent on uh, images because they are used to construct runtime environments and are needed to run an application. I kind of like to, <clears throat> can you back up to the yes, previous sure. slide real quick? So yeah. I, I like to kind of describe the difference between Docker images and Docker containers. The images are the class and the container are the, the instantiated object, right? Yeah, yes, yes, exactly, yes, yes. Similar like that, uh, this example, yeah. And uh, we create container from image so here. So we, we need an image to exist to be able to create our container. And we are able to create our own uh, images. And different Docker images, we can find them in Docker Hub. Uh, Microsoft have uh, their own images for .NET, for example, for ASP, for .NET framework, for the runtime. And we use them to be able to create our Docker file that is, uh, uh, let's say, that's our file of instruction, uh, different uh, comments uh, where we said we need to uh, this runtime, this framework. So we give our instruction uh, to be able to run our container, to, to build and run our container. So as presented here, the Docker file, it's a script like script that includes different uh, comments and arguments listed success, uh, successfully to automatically perform actions on a base image in order to create or form a new one. So we are we need to have image to be able to create our container using a Docker file in our application. So they are used for organizing things and greatly help with deployment by simplifying the process to start to finish. It's really simple. Our Docker files start with defining an image from, we use from, we will see uh, how we create uh, uh, our Docker file and what can, uh, how we can generate automatically Docker file in using Visual Studio code or Visual Studio uh, 2022. And uh, which, uh, from which uh, the build process will start. So we start with from where we start our process. It will be followed by various other uh, methods, comments. We have arguments also. We have conditions. And in return, uh, we provide a new image, which is be used for creating Docker containers. So the goal is for application. We start from existing image. We try to create our Docker file, our application with the Docker file. The Docker file will include the different structure with what we need to use, framework, runtime, uh, start with, with from and uh, after we are able to create our new image and the container that will be based on this image. So, 
Yeah, another way I like to think of the Docker file, if we, this is a really good visual here on this slide. I like to think of the Docker file as a recipe and the Docker image as sort of like the meal that you're preparing, whatever that dish is. It's another way, at least in my mind, to visualize that. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It's like saying, uh, I need this one, so this list of uh, ingredients in our recipe, so we need this one, this one, so it's... Uh, uh, here we need uh, different, we need an image, that's the first ingredient, let's say, it can be one image or more, but we need one image at least to be, uh, to be able to create our container in uh, using this Docker file. So any application, and we create our application, for example, .NET application or any other uh, type of application, uh, any framework, uh, and uh, we add this Docker file and we can have another type of but this is the base of docker file we create docker hard to say i will use this for the front time this framework this one uh, it's a list yes it's a list of uh, instruction that we need to to finish our meal let's say yes our recipe and uh, here an example for us uh, for uh, some things that we need to to see in docker file so we uh, to specify our image to, for content, we say that we start by from. This is an example for uh, .NET, uh, for creating a .NET, a ASP.NET application. It can be MVC or uh, Web API. So it's uh, applied for any uh, .NET application, ASP.NET application. The first thing we need to find is an image we want to base it. Uh, we also need to set a working directory where we want to, the file to end up. Uh, on the container, this is the first one, and we do that with from and work dir. So we grab an image with a small, uh, small operating system image made for .NET Core in uh, this example. Next, we need to copy the project file ending uh, by csproj, and additionally, we also need to call .NET Restore to ensure we install all uh, specified dependencies. So as you can see, we are using .NET command line like .NET restore to be able to, uh, it's one of uh, the specific instructions that we use it here for a .NET uh, application. Real quick question. Um, the, uh, we, we've got a guest that's asking, what does the uh, less than, less than symbols mean? So like when you say .NET or run .NET restore, um, and then it says my solution, just before my solution, those two. That, that actually looks like a, typo to me. Uh, I think it should be double quotes. Uh, yes. Ah, uh, okay. it's, uh, it's four prompt. Yes, double, yeah, yes, here. Ah, yes, it's four prompt, so it changes. Uh, in, oh, uh, yeah, PowerPoint. Yeah. It, yeah. It, try, it tries doing smart quotes or something. Right, right, yes. right. Okay. Uh, yes, it's the name of this, our solution, for example, my solution or any. So it's finished by CS Brush, but this, yes, it's double. I don't know yes. why you changed it. Thank you. Good for question. That. Good, good question. Yep. <laughs> yes, good question. It's uh, related to PowerPoint. Sorry for that. I didn't uh, figure out about it. Uh, so the third, so we will copy and build it. The first next, uh, we need to copy our application files and we will build our application. So we start by specifying the image. We try to copy the project files and now we'll copy and build our application. And uh, we have another uh, instruction here, as you can see. Uh, again, we need to specify the image and our working directory here. Uh, in this file, we are using multi-stage one of uh, best practices to create your um, uh, your Docker file is uh, to use the multi-stage here. We have the first one is to build. The second one is a, it's a base. We can have another uh, another uh, multi-stage, another stage here for production, for example. And here just to build, to test the multi-stage. Here we have the build and the base. But here, as you can see, the first one is we we are uh, we start with SDK. Our application is uh, ASP.NET application. We need to add the runtime of our uh, image and we copy that in the publishing uh, in the publish uh, directory and this is uh, there are different throws so this time we want to copy our build files in our case from app to publish yeah there was a question real quick and i just wanted to get clarification yes. so we see that you copy the project and yes. then later on you copy and build so the copy dot dot they were specifically asking why is that necessary uh, to copy in this part, this one? 
Yeah, yeah, the copy dot dot. So from yeah. the source directory to the target directory. In in the number three heading there. Yeah. Ah, in number three. Okay. Here we need to uh, uh, here the copy. So we need to copy uh, this this one. The dot dot dot. It's about the first the source and the first one before. So we need to copy all the files to ensure here that we copy all the different uh file on the different let's say not files but the different dlls and there is different files let's say <laughs> different files needed uh, for to run our project so it's uh, we need that to copy all what we need for the, to run our to build our solution this is why we need to copy again uh what we need because here we restore the difference as we can see here run.net restore maybe we can restore different dlls needed to, to run our solution and here we'd like to ensure that we are able to uh, uh, to copy all the app files needed to run and to build our solution perfect okay and here it's another stage because we it's an example to um, to create asp.net so we need asp uh, ASP.NET 7, in our case, it's uh, .NET uh, Core 7, uh, version 7. So we need to copy all, and we create a publishing rep uh, here. Uh, we will copy all in publish to be able to run all uh, the solution. And next here, uh, here we have we need to start an application. So we add uh, this comment how to start up our application. So we do that using this, uh, this comment endpoint. We use it always in all files, uh, .NET or not .NET. So we all we use always entry point. It takes uh, an array that transform into command line invocation with arguments. So our arguments like uh, here we have so all .NET. We have your the DLL of your solution, and simply means that uh, I, it will invoke .NET uh, to and uh, is in our solution DLL of our solution on the command line. Uh, here uh, we have some uh, things that we use, some arguments that we are able to use to optimize uh, your uh, the build of uh, your application, your Docker file. You are able to optimize your Docker file to be able to have a small a container, small image to create. If we create a small container, we are able to secure more, so we limit the surface, the our surface, uh, so of, uh, of the container, so we are able to secure it. Here we have you, for example, to optimize publish, we use uh, no restore, some arguments. Uh, I can share in the end of, with you uh, a GitHub, um, a GitHub uh, of uh, a Docker file that includes different details related of optimizing your Docker file. So we can use them or not, but it's better to use them to optimize your Docker file. Uh, to build our image, we use Docker build. And uh, here we given, for example, the first image, it is uh, your solution image, for example, uh, 1.0, uh, it's our uh, tag. We uh, use tag, it's, the, it's like a version for your image, so we can have multiple version or tags. We add that as a tag, so uh, the first one is one. It can be a number, it can be a dev, for example, so we, we will create some tags in, um, in our example after. And we use uh, T, uh, minus T, to give our image a name. So this is the name. Uh, so become this is the name of our image. And uh, to run our container, we use Docker run, simple. Uh, this is, uh, we have some other arguments that we use them here. Uh, let's start by the most simple. Uh, this is minus minus uh, name. <laughs> it's uh, the PowerPoint again, sorry. Minus minus name. Uh, you give a name, for example, for your container here. This is the image, and now we are run. When we use Docker run, we will create our container from our image. So this is the name of my image. The tag of image it can be one, two, depends from from you. So it depends from the uh, the tag used. So it can be dev, prod, for example. And here uh, we use uh, 8080 support that we are able to use them. So it's simple. Uh, minus D simply means that we run the container in the background. You can use this argument or not, so it's not a problem here. So it's some other arguments to optimize the running of our container. Minus P means that we will match an external port to an, an internal port, uh, container port. We use it with the, the port here. Uh, 
and the name it's okay so and uh, we use uh, minus minus rm flag this one uh, and in this case uh, docker will remove all the anonymous volumes associated with the, the container when the container is removed so this is a structure of our docker files what it can include how we can build our image we can we we have the tags to be we are able to create multiple images from a specific image that uh, we already used before so if you go back one more slide we did have another kind of follow-up question about the copy i wanted to get clarification on real quick so, uh, this one yeah. yep perfect yeah. okay so uh pablo is asking so when you run .NET restore all resolved libraries will still be on the building machine not the target image so you need to copy everything uh with copy afterwards question mark so i i just wanted to specify this a bit so when we look at this docker file example we're specifying the base image that we are going to use as our build so you see from mcr sdk so we're using the sdk as our build image and we're going to copy over the build dependencies for example the project we're going to resolve all of the other project dependencies then we're going to copy over all of our local files and then build as a release and then we're going to output it to the app build directory so then our next thing is to specify our actual base image so we copy everything from build into our base you know app publish directory and the reason for that is the docker file can be used it, internally it's going to use the sdk to basically build our project and get those binaries like the executable like the dlls and those things and then it's going to relayer that on top of the runtime. So that's kind of the workflow, just, just to add clarity to there are some questions in chat. But yes. Yeah. And, the, and to take that a step further, um, you heard Hamida mention yeah. the term multi stage build. Um, okay. Each from statement that you see in the Docker file represents a stage. Yeah. If we were to think of a food analogy, since that's our theme so far, um, you could think of in that build stage you've got things tools like your spatula that you're using to prepare the dish you're not going to eat your spatula hopefully so that wouldn't <laughs> take it to the final destination yeah, don't, don't tell me what time. scott don't tell me what to do <laughs> so now we know why cam was in the er over no. the <laughs> awesome yeah uh, hopefully that adds some clarity uh keep the questions coming we love this this is great yes <laughs> So, as I said before, that container can be used not only for, uh, for microservices. So, you might want to use a Docker container just to simplify deployment. And even if you are not creating microservices, for example, uh, perhaps you want to improve your DevOps workflow with Docker containers, can give you uh, Docker containers, can give you a better isolation test environment, and can also eliminate. Uh, uh, deployment issues caused by missing dependency when you move to production uh, environments. We know that developer, uh, when start working in a project, they deploy, they test everything. They have multiple unit tests, integration tests, but finally, and always, we find some issues in production environment. And the uh, container is the uh, best fit that we are using is an environment what is in uh, in test environment will be the same in production environment. We don't need to configure again. We don't need to add more, let's say, conf other configuration on DLS, for example. So it's the same environment. In, uh, in cases like this, even if you are deploying a monolithic application, it makes sense to use Docker and uh, Windows containers, for example, if you are using a .NET framework, the old version of .NET framework application, not .NET Core, because .NET Core, we are able to deploy also on Linux environment. In most cases, for this scenario, uh, you, need, uh, you don't need to migrate, for example, your application to .NET 6, for example. Uh, you can just use Docker containers uh, that includes the traditional .NET framework uh, in Windows container. But uh, we recommend always uh, to uh, migrate uh, your current solution to .NET 6, .NET 7, .NET 8. So it depends from the, the latest uh, .NET Core version uh, in this case. No questions? Okay. 
Uh, now we try to just to discover uh, some, um, to do see what are the prerequisites uh, needed. So what we need to uh, work and uh, to prepare develop, development environment internally before deploying to Azure. So in our case, we will use Docker. I know that uh, we have other uh, other tools like Podman, like Ranchers, but in our case, we will use a Docker desktop. It's really free and it's, uh, uh, it's supported by Visual Studio uh, Code, Visual Studio 2022, 2020, uh, 2019, uh, 2019, sorry. Uh, so we are able to use uh, all version here. It's supported. We have Docker support. Uh, to be able to uh, deploy on Azure containers, we need uh, to an account, an Azure account. Uh, if you'd like to use PowerShell, you, you can use Azure Cloud Shell because for if you would like to create Azure Kubernetes services, we need the uh, Azure Cloud Shell or PowerShell. So it depends from the language you'd like to use to be able to uh, to deploy our solution, our uh, containers, containers because it's uh, manage uh, multiple containers. Uh, in uh, Kubernetes, Azure Kubernetes services. And uh, for uh, if we will use the Visual Studio code, we need to add extensions like Microsoft C Sharp, Docker extension, and uh, some other extension can be uh, installed. For example, for app, uh, Azure app service, we know that we will present uh, the different services that we are able to use. And app service include also uh, the use of containers. You are able to create containers in app service to deploy your containers in Azure, in Azure app service. So if you will use Azure uh, app service, you need to add the extension also in Visual Studio code. And uh, for our demonstration flow, so for our short time that we have, so we'll try to build a Docker image. We will try to add tags, what's tag, how we, how we add tags uh, using Visual Studio code, for example. And we'll build and store images in the, in the cloud here. In our case, it will be Azure uh, container services. So we will use the registry, that's private registry. And we, we have another um, public registry that is Docker Hub. Uh, we are able to use it if you'd like to host uh, public images. And because we, do, we have the different images in Docker app, we can find them also. And uh, Azure container apps uh, and Azure Kubernetes service, we see the difference, the difference between them after. So let's start by uh, building a Docker image. We, I will open Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio here. And we are able to use Visual Studio 2022 or Visual Studio Code. We we see both of them if you want, if you still have time. But for Visual Studio uh, 2022, it's really simple to create your application uh, with container uh, included. It's really simple. And uh, we will open Visual Studio here. For, and it's simple. We select create a new pro project. Uh, you do like to create MVC. Application to you, but uh, when we create our before uh, going that, we need. I would like to show you a look at it to see the different images and the different containers. So here we will create, we will build our image. So we will find our images in this place, and when we run, we we'll use Docker RAM. We we'll see the different containers that are deployed in this place here. And we use it to build and uh, to deploy, to run uh, the container internally in your machine. So uh, I'm using Windows uh, 11, in my case, for Windows uh, machine. But uh, I'm able to create and build and deploy uh, images in a Linux environment. So we don't have any issue about that. So. Uh, here, for example, I will start by this template, web application. So, but you have, you can use any other template, MVC, web API. So I'll use a single, simple one here. And uh, let's say I give a name, for example, .NET, uh, .NET sample, for example. I'll change this one. And after, uh, we will uh, select uh, uh, next, and as you can see here, we are able to configure uh, uh, the use, uh, the containerized, the creation of uh, an application containerized using Docker. So I will just check the 
disable this one. And here we are needed to enable Docker. We have Windows and Linux. In my case, I will use, for example, Linux, just to show you that I'm able to use that uh, in my Windows machine. And we click on Create. I selected .NET 7. You have uh, other framework, .NET 6, .NET 5, so and other uh, .NET framework also. And dot, if we selected .NET framework, uh, here we have Docker uh, operating system as uh, the unique uh, environment that we are able to use because uh, we run .NET framework on Windows uh, application. And this is my solution. Different documentation, here, but, uh, we are able to see to build a uh, .NET application with containers. But here we are able to see that we have a new file that's Docker file that we already presented before. And this Docker file will present the different elements that we already discussed. Here, as you can see, we have the base. It's a multi-stage, it's using multi-stage. So we have ASP.NET here, the SDK. So the order is not the same because it's really optimized the Docker file. And uh, here we have another stage, as you can see, final stage. Here we added another stage always. Of, you can add multiple stage. It's recommended to use multi-stage to optimize your Docker file. And uh, here I will show you uh, Docker, Docker desktop. You can see here, this is the, the image that we already use it. And this is the, our sample .NET sample. And in container, it's already uh, we run. We see that uh, this is the name .NET sample. It's generated automatically, and here we have the dev. It's the tag that we use it here in image. We have the description. So here we have the name. We have the dev. So it's generated automatically in Visual Studio. Visual Studio Code. We are able to do that uh, using command lines, as we showed before. Uh, the build, Docker build, Docker run, using the terminals. And this is an example. You, if you'd like to have something ready as Docker files, so this you can use a Visual Studio 2022, and the same for Visual Studio 2019. Also, it's supported. If you still are using the the previous version of Visual Studio, and for Visual Studio Code, uh, so this is an ready an example here. Uh, but uh, you. Can can use the terminal to create uh, control shift p here you select control shift p use after you get this one add uh, docker files to your workspace uh, if you click here for example uh, you, it will add for you it will request uh, which, which framework as you see here dotnet framework uh, you do like to build your solution for example in uh, Linux uh, operating system on Windows, for example, I will select Linux. Uh, here you say which port you'd like to use. We can add uh, any port, for example, uh, 500 or 8080, for example. So it depends from. Uh, this is an example here. I know that in our solution, we have already. So you a bit resource intensive it's kind of breaking up for me able to create a... sorry i said it, is it just on my end or does it seem like the stream is breaking up a little bit um, cam you're on mute sounds choppy okay people are saying it is choppy and dropping yeah okay. sorry yep any problem sorry uh it's okay now is it so, Lamita, I think you were going to show the project file, correct? Okay. Yes. It's uh, yes. Now it's uh, could you see the so this one? Yeah. No, it's coming through now. Like some of the audio and some of the frames were dropping a bit, and I'm just assuming okay. that it's Docker container running and you know retort uh, resource intensive on your machine. So it's things were getting oh. a little choppy on okay. the video end. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry for that. So uh, did, I didn't get this one. Okay. So, okay. Are you able to see my Docker file at least now? Yes. Okay. So as mentioned, Control uh, Shift P. So Control Shift P to be able to. Uh, I will just show you again this one. So we select add Docker files uh, to workspace, uh, 
and uh, it will be requested to select the framework, the operating system. If you want, you get another question maybe. So you, I think that is the problem. You another question that I asked you to to have Docker Compose. Docker Compose is a new file allows you to have multiple to manage multiple containers to add multiple containers in one file. This is the difference. But for me, I said no. I guess yes. I said no. And here it creates for you Docker Ignore. It's another file where uh, to use it to ignore a different file that will not be necessary for uh, your image or in your container also. So this is another uh, Docker file uh, optimized also. We can see other, uh, let's say, other uh, instruction here. It's used also to optimize the Docker file, minimize, especially the to to get more secure uh, security, add more security in your Docker file. For example, here we create no root user, and I can share with you uh, uh, an article in my uh, in my blog that uh, explain more in detail uh, why we use, for example, a run add user and the different elements. But here, as you can see, it's using it's using the multi-stage also uh, multi-stage. Uh, environment. So here we have the base, we have the build, we have another publish as final. Also, we have multi-stage here. It's using multi-stage. So this is the another uh, Docker file. In our case, we try to come here and we will use our command lines uh, Docker build to build our image, and uh, after Docker a run to be able to run our application, our image. Let's say. So here we use Docker build, and uh, as we mentioned it before. Uh, so here we use minus T to give a name. So my image, for example, my image Docker, and I will give uh, a dev, for example, here or one. Sorry for that. And the directory, the primary directory here, and uh, we try to build. As you can see, it's it will build our image and we will see a new image will be added in docker desktop in the part of uh, images uh, under its under it will be fetched here and we will use after docker run to be able to see uh, the the running uh, uh, the, uh, our running container from this uh, image I know it will take a few times uh, meanwhile uh, because we don't have ready time uh, we will see, uh, I don't know if we have still time, but here I will go back just because we can a <laughs> few times. So we, I go back here to uh, the presentation to add the tag. I'll show you how we can tag even my image is will be created. But I would like just to show you because uh, here we talk about containers. We focused more uh, today about creating our container in, uh, uh, in our environments. But I would like to at least to display the different uh, containers in Azure before going to see if uh, the image uh, it's uh, it will it's run or not uh, the image will run or not. So here uh, we have the different uh, choices to create uh, to deploy your container already created internally. So we have app service as I said before. It's more simple to use for one container. So it includes containers. Uh, or here, for example, like Kubernetes service based on Kubernetes. If you know Kubernetes, uh, we have container instance, container registry to 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 store your the different uh, containers, and we have service fabric also. It's another service we will not cover it today. It's another service that we are able to use container also and different batches. We don't cover it also today. And here we, we can see the difference between them, platform as a service, container as a service, it's uh, Azure Service Fabric. And if you'd like to talk about container as a service, we have container instance for a single uh, single container, uh, app container application apps, app, app, uh, app, uh, Azure container apps, or Azure Kubernetes service is an orchestrator in case you have multiple uh, containers to manage, it will orchestrate between them, and we have Another approach that is for event-driven architecture that is function as a service. It's another approach different from containers. And here we have uh, Azure Functions. And to see the difference between uh, different containers services in Azure, we will use always Azure Container Registry to store the different containers in the registry. It's a private registry. Uh, it's similar to Docker Hub. So uh, it's Docker Hub allow you to have 
private public images and for uh, container registry it's a private you can register all your containers and if you have a monolithic application for example in our case uh, we talked about that before uh, you need only one container because for microservices we need to have multiple containers to uh, to manage so for monolithic application you are able to use azure container instance to store the, the instance and or you have app uh, azure app service as a container but if you will you need to manage multiple containers we need to use uh, azure kubernetes service and azure container apps in our case so for azure container registry uh, it's a registry, as, as we said before, it's a private registry. Uh, we use it similar to Docker Hub, but it offers multiple benefits. And uh, it's highly scalable. It provides uh, uh, enhanced, so it supports Docker uh, pools that can uh, span multiple nodes concurrently. So we are able to create a registry in Azure portal or a command line in Azure CLI, for example. Uh, we are able to store and host images and build also images and containers here. So you are you can uh, use uh, Azure Portal, so the simple way to create uh, your Azure Container Registry. Or if you prefer using a command line, you can go using Azure PowerShell or uh, Azure CLI. So it's simple as it uh, as it use this command line. So you, the keywords always create. Uh, you need to identify. Uh, resource group where we you will, you will have your resource that is in our case uh, azure container registry to give a name so this is the name of your resource group this is the name of uh, your azure container registry this is uh, let's say the pricing plan it can be basic standard premium so we can we will see that if you want after where in azure portal and we need to enable admin uh, if you'd like to use after Azure or communicate uh, to with uh, your Azure Container Registry uh, after, for example, uh, we just uh, check uh, not this one for Visual as you can see here. Let's check it in uh, in uh, Docker Desktop. This is my image Docker. This is the tag used, and we use uh, Docker Run to be able to run our uh, our container. But for example, for the text. Here, if you want, if you install a Docker extension, you can see here you are able to see the different images locally and the different registry. If you use, for example, Azure or other registry, for example, in our case, uh, Docker Hub, you are able to to just uh, to click here to connect the registry, and uh, it's simple after to deploy from uh, your, your here from. Uh, uh, from your solution internally to uh, the different registry remotely. So Hamida, let me let me ask a question real quick. So yes, so you just built an image. Now that image yes. is that image is on your local machine right now. You haven't pushed exactly. it to a registry yet. Exactly. Yes, it's in our local machine here. Okay. And and just so I understand, so uh, Azure Container Registry. That's kind of like say Docker Hub, but it's a private instance. Is that exactly. correct? Yes. We, okay. we, yes. Exactly. Yes. It's uh, like it's a private registry where we now I have my image. I'm able now to uh, store my image in Azure Container Registry. We can organize the registry by project, create a registry by project, for example, or by resource group. So it depends from the structure of your inside the company, the structure that uh, you'd like, you prefer to add it in Azure Container Registry because you are able to create more than one container registry, but one, it's preferred to have one container registry per project, for example. So it's a registry, it's a place when we will store our images, okay? It can be uh, for multiple containers, so image, uh, we will see it just, I will show you an example here. This is, for example, uh, this is Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, to create it simple here, we create a resource. I will show you how we know that we already see the command lines to create Azure Container Registry using command lines. And we see here containers category. We can search by category. It's simple to use, really. And let's check here in Container Registry. We click on Create here. And we select subscription, and here we uh, we are able to create a resource group. For example, I will say .NET Live uh, Live Energy. For example, I would like just to to have in this uh, my registry in the same place. If you'd like to add more 
uh, more uh, services like Azure Kubernetes service. You have multiple uh, registry to man uh, containers to manage. I give a name, for example, my registry. I don't know if it exists already. Yes, it exists. <laughs> already exists, okay. Oh, it should be a unique name, my registry. Docker sample, I try to have uh, some more complex name. It should be unique name for the registry. You select the location. Uh, and here we have a different plan. You'd like to select basic SK, SKU, uh, if you remember the command lines, basic, standard, premium. It depends from uh, the your application. We can select, for example, here a standard. We can see the difference between them in pricing capabilities uh, according to project, your project. So you are able to select which one is suitable after review and create, and our uh, container registry will be created. After, from uh, Visual Studio Code, we are able to, uh, to push from here, to push our image remotely because we already uh, have I, I already uh, made a connection connection between uh, my local environments here i selected for example azure i give my credentials in azure or docker hub as you can see here you are able to uh, to use any other private registry if you use an, an internal registry to store your uh, your uh, container and your images also so you, you are able to, uh, to add that in uh, the Visual Studio code. And uh, here, for example, for my, my image Docker, you can see here we have also the previous one created using uh, Visual Studio uh, 2022. I'm able to just select here. I need to escape, sorry for that. So here, so we are able to run this image instead of using Docker run with a list of instructions that we need. And we are able to, to pull or push it where I would like to push it. For example, in our case, to Azure. I need to select the registry. My container registry is not created. I have already another one. So we select the registry. And this is, for example, another one. But uh, you will have our registry already here, for example. And you are able to create a new registry from Visual Studio Code. So this is an example here from pushing from your local machine or images to a remote uh, registry that in our case Azure Container Registry and is the case also as we see for Docker Hub so for Azure whatever so here and let's go back here to see oh, is, oh okay I didn't click on create so it's check after we need to click on create to be able to uh, deploy our uh, registry just a few seconds hope oh, takes no time here but uh, this is an example for using uh, Visual Studio Code uh, and for Visual Studio 2022, it's really more simple than that also. So right click here, you click on publish and uh, you select uh, Docker Container uh, Registry or Azure. So we find them both, uh, we can find them. And here we have Azure Container Registry. So you click on uh, next. Uh, and uh, you need to select your subscription, for example. And as you can see here, we already have uh, the registry already created in our case. So my registry docker sample, we click on finish and my image will be pushed to this uh, registry. So we click publish here. It's simple, we click publish and the image, it will check the container prerequisites, check everything and it will be publishing now. It will push our image to Azure Container Registry. If you go back here, let's, uh, Click here again. I will push again this one. We see the, the, how we can store. We have different uh, images here. We click on push, Azure. It seems that it's not seeing the uh, my registry. Okay, let's say Docker. Okay, I think uh, it's not created, but I will try to check this one. It's already created here. So this is a uh, Docker. Um, not Docker, Azure Container uh, Registry. In our case, to check our repositories, we in service category here, section, we have repositories. And we can see the different repositories in different repositories that we will uh, push them here. In our case, for example, it's publishing, already publishing. We will see the name .NET simple, and we see the difference if we have multiple uh, tags uh, use it in our case here with multiple tags 
we will see for every uh, image the tag uh, the tags associated so we will not so we'll come back uh, after here but i would like just to show you uh, another services here so we already build and store image using uh, if you are using microservices so we will manage multiple containers in our case we need an orchestrator and Kubernetes in one of the most known orchestrator users and Azure Kubernetes service is a managed service used uh, uh, to deploy a managed Kubernetes cluster in Azure by offloading the operational overhead to Azure. So as a hosted Kubernetes service, Azure handles critical tasks like health monitoring and maintenance. Since Kubernetes masters are managed by Azure, you only manage and maintain the agent nodes. If you know Kubernetes, so maybe you will understand that. So it's a really a managed service for Kubernetes. So it's free, but you because you only pay for the agent nodes within your cluster, but not for the masters. This is about Azure Kubernetes services. And uh, to create a cluster using command lines, which I start always with command lines because for from Azure portals, simple as we see before, uh, Azure con container registry is simple to select, uh, to give a name, to select your, your resource group. So here we will create, uh, we use create AKS in our resource group. We give a name to our cluster and uh, we need, for example, one node you can, have more than one node, two, three, four. So we recommend always to have more than one node if you are in production. Uh, we, gener we need to generate uh, SSH keys uh, uh, here. So we add this uh, arguments and we need to say uh, for Azure Kubernetes service, what is the registry needed to use? So for example, for a project, specific project, we will use uh, the first container registry. So this is, I will manage all images that is inside or containers that inside this uh, uh, Azure Container Registry. So this is an example. And uh, and here we the different instruction to deploy Azure Kubernetes cluster and run application using Azure CLI. So for you you are able to create uh, your Azure Kubernetes service using Azure Portal, but you need to uh, use command lines to deploy the application. So you need to go to the the dashboard to get your credentials, your subscription, so get your credential because you need them to be able to connect to your cluster. After in your cluster, you need to create a deployment file that will include a different instruction here. Here it's a simple file, but it can include more elements, but this is simple file that will use this container, for example, I need to say, so we it's for deployments, this is the kind of deployment. Uh, here we have one replica, so we need to use one or more than container here, uh, which image I would like to use, the part, so it's classic. Uh, uh, so this classic file that you are able to use them to deploy your application, this file can include more and then uh, more than one application to manage more than one containers. As you can see here, we are containers, so we need other containers. And so we run this file, it's simple. We use uh, kubectl apply for to running, uh, your, use, to running your file. And to, to see your deployment, use kubectl get deployment. So it's really uh, to deploy really your uh, your application, application that include multiple microservices, as I said before. Uh, I will just go back quickly here. Uh, so just as yes. a quick time check, Amida, we have yes. just one minute remaining. One minute, yeah, yep. exactly. Okay. Um, just to try to here, as you can see, just to see the container registry, and this is the repository. As you can see, that we already deployed using Visual Studio 2022, and here's the tag used is latest. If we, if we are adding, if you have more than one tags, we have the list of tags. Uh, uh, after here in the bottom after this one and uh, I will just go quickly here we have another uh, way of to orchestrate a different uh, container that is Azure container apps it's a fully managed environment that enables you to run microservices and containerized application on a serverless uh, 
platform. It's really serverless platform. They are able to use it. It's more simple than using a Kubernetes maybe for use to start. You can start with container apps uh, or according to the projects. It depends from uh, the project also. And I'd like to share with you, just uh, if you'd like to have more about, uh, about containers, managing containers, I already have uh, a book, uh, the first the first one, sorry, uh, developer guides to cloud apps using uh, Microsoft uh, Azure. So here you can find how we can configure more about uh, Docker and other like Docker like Podman, for example, uh, how to deploy to different uh, services. This is what we talk about, Kubernetes, Azure Kubernetes uh, servers, Azure Container Apps, uh, Azure Container Instance. Also, you will find the difference between them in this book. Uh, the second one, it's really to talk more about APIs, about event-driven architecture. If you are more, uh, would like to see more about uh, this concept, as I said, serverless, uh, so Azure Functions, so this, so this is two books are in Amazon, so you can't find them. All right. Well, <laughs> a lot of great content there. I, I learned a lot myself. I hope uh, folks in the audience did as well. Um, I'd like to thank our viewers for watching today. Um, as a reminder, you can check out other .NET Live TV streams like the one you saw today and recordings over at dot.net slash live. I'd encourage you all to tune in next week when our friend Isaac Levin will join the show. Until next time, thanks again, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.